Austria's top bishop is praising so-called gay marriage. Vienna Cardinal Christoph Schoenborn told the German magazine last week that same-sex marriages affirm the goodness of marriage. The pro-gay cardinal said, quote, I personally am moved that at a time where marriage so, is losing its attraction, uh, my those family. couples who feel and live out a same-sex attraction yearn to have the highest form of partnership, end quote. Schoenborn has scandalized faithful Austrian Catholics by allowing gay-themed prayer services in his cathedral, featuring homosexual activists speaking from the pulpit. An Austrian cardinal is being slammed for allowing desecration of his cathedral. Catholics are blasting Cardinal Christoph Schoenborn for hosting a charity concert at St. Stephen's Cathedral in Vienna last week, featuring a shirtless pro-gay actor dancing to rock music on the communion rail, flanked by actors dressed as demons. One Austrian priest said, quote, We do not fear the Almighty anymore. We trample upon the souls that are entrusted to us. In a lecture in Milan, Italy, Schönborn praised himself for having defended a cohabiting homosexual member of a Vienna parish council. Schönborn described the member and his unchaste partner as, quote, two pure young men.
and we are blessed this afternoon to have Cardinal Schomburn with us and he is one of the key uh, one of the key drivers really behind the uh, Amoris Laetitia Io vi raccomando a tutti voi di leggere la presentazione che ha fatto il cardinale Schoenberg, che è un grande teologo e è stato lui segretario della congregazione per la dottrina fede che conosce bene la dottrina della tutti. In quella presentazione la sua domanda avrà la risposta. Uh, 305, where uh, Pope uh, Francis say, says, um, because of forms of conditioning and mitigating factors, it is possible that in an objective situation of sin, objective situation of sin, which may not be subjectively culpable or fully such, a person can be living in God's grace, can love and can also grow in the life of grace and charity while receiving the church's help to this end. And here he has in the footnote only this little word. In certain cases, this can include the help of the sacraments. I had the privilege and I think consider it as the most important gift in my life that uh, I was asked by Cardinal Ratzinger to serve as drafting secretary for this work and these five years of intensive work on the catechism are certainly the most fascinating years of my life. Although he was the head of that, every sentence in this went through you, didn't it? There was not a single sentence that you weren't responsible for drafting. Yes. But I was the pen. <laughs> Many pages. <laughs> yeah. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, which is uh, really a gift of God to the Church. What says the Catechism on homosexuality? Homosexuality refers to relation between men or between women who experience an exclusive or predominant sexual attraction towards person, persons of the same sex. It has taken a great variety of forms through the centuries and in different cultures. Its psychological genesis remains largely unexplained. And then Joseph Ratzinger, who became my teacher and since then, I know him for 42 years now, and uh, in confession I can say the first thing he said to me after the election in 2005, uh, when he was elected Pope, he said, let us keep our friendship. Uh, it's really a great privilege to have known him and to have worked with him with, for many years. The Catechism of the Catholic Church would not exist if Cardinal Ratzinger would not have been the head of our drafting committee, the head of this commission. He is an amazing man and it's a great, great privilege to have had him as teacher. What about Pope Francis? Pope Francis is, is just a joy. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Pope Benedict often said, the church does not grow by proselytizing, but by attraction. I think that we will not be judged about our religion, but about the question, what did you do for the needs of justice in the world? What did you need do for the hungry in the world? What did you do for the refugees, 
for the poor, the needy? What did you do for peace in the world? What have you done for the ecological needs of our planet? My first experience in, in uh, interreligious, I would say first ecumenical uh, friendship was the friendship with an orthodox monk uh, who was decisive in my own spiritual development, in my own theological way. Uh, and this friendship lasted uh, over the years till his death in 2001. Orthodox tradition has much to say about marriage. May I ask Father Michael to uh, Father Michael to speak about the, the Orthodox tradition? May I ask you, dear Rabbi Lent, uh, to give us your comments on the topic? Thank you, Your Eminence. Let's take a look at some of the traditional Jewish teachings about the family and home. And often we can learn from them the famous quote from Rabbi Hanina, I have learned much from my teachers, I have learned more from my colleagues, but most of all, I have learned from my students. In Jewish families, the Friday night meal is of great significance as the Sabbath enters at sundown on Friday. In Judaism, we refer to the home as a mikdash ma'at, as a mini temple, as a mini sanctuary. Thank you, Rabbi. That was great. That was great, and I think the applause has shown that you touched the hearts of many uh, by this real experience of transmitting, conveying uh, faith to the next generation through the family. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rabbi Allen. Uh, many, many blessings for your work. Our work. Our work. Right, Our you work. Our work. Our work. Uh, you know, I, I, I do not dare to say that I had a personal friendship with Emmanuel Levinas, but I was his student for four years, but I sat, so to say, at his feet every fortnight when he came to give his lectures, and specifically his lecture on rabbinic exegesis. And for everybody, it applies what he said in Evangelii Gaudium, uh, we must take off our shoes before the sacred ground of the other. It's the biblical image of Moses taking off his shoes for the sacred ground of God's presence. God's presence in every person. Take off the shoes before the sacred ground of the other. early priesthood on, when at the first time I met uh, evangelicals, free churches, uh, uh, what, what brought me to them was to feel the deep love for Jesus, which often uh, I find more vibrant more, and more expressed uh, in, in other Christian communities than in 500 Jahre Reformation und gleichzeitig 50 Jahre charismatische Erneuerung. Papst. I met this couple, uh, uh, they are from Latin America, working in the Vatican. And I met him outside the, the, the Basilica and, and asked, you have the Holy Spirit, uh, can, can you give me advice for, for the conclave that will start in a few hours? And she whis whispered in my ear, 
Bergoglio. <laughs> and it, it hit me really. If these people say Bergoglio, that's an indication of the Holy Spirit. And, they, and I'm sure that many of us have received similar signs during the conclave. Uh, it wouldn't have been possible to have this election so soon and so rapidly. You know, there's a, a strange similarity with your Archbishop Justin. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope so much that they will meet soon. Because uh, I don't know about uh, how the secrets of the conclave in Lambeth Palace works, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but uh, it looks like a little miracle that he became the Archbishop. Yes. Doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> and you're going tomorrow to meet with um, Archbishop Justin yes. at um, Lambeth Palace. Yeah. And again, that's a friendship that is growing. It, it is, yeah, I think it's so s symbolic that uh, Justin Welby has been elected for the Anglican Church just a fortnight after Pope Francis has been elected. Yes. Yeah. And, and you, can, you can see there, there, is, there is a strong movement of the Holy Spirit to, uh, to bring together the Christians to overcome old barriers. Uh, yeah. and that, that's why I am here, sorry. <laughs> so I think, I think the Lord has given us a great sign through these two elections. Most Reverend Dr. Michael Jackson is the Anglican Archbishop of <coughs> Dublin. Uh, most welcome, Your Grace. My prayer would be this, that first and last, last and first, the family be a crucible of safety across generations and across contents. Thank you. Thank you, Your Grace. But we met again and I said, Ayatollah, on your faith, on your face, I see radiant the joy of your pilgrimage. And then he was very moved and said, I will pray for you in Mecca. I would say the first, first element is that having had these experiences, uh, you will never speak uh, in a, in a, a uh, respectless way uh, about another religion because you have seen uh, faithful of the other religion that have become your friends so you do not speak badly about your own friends we have no guarantee that europe will escape uh, from what is a reality that many in the Islamic world consider Europe as a mature fruit for a takeover by Islam. It's a fact. And we have not to blame them because they are convinced that they do something good according to God's will. Doing so, taking over. I will never forget when I saw the first time the Buddhists praying in their temple. Uh, when I saw, when I entered the first time a mosque and saw the prayer in the mosque. Of course, 
Some people in the world deny the existence of the divine uh, and we have to respect their conscience and their conviction. In all nations, in all human hearts, you can find this, this spark of the divine, which is uh, the reason why religious experience is something we can share about everywhere. Because it can help us to come out of also of the trap of, of, of creationism, which is, sorry to say, which is a deep misunderstanding. Uh, to believe uh, uh, in God, the Creator, is not to believe in a six-day creation. Please, no. And myself, as a young student, I began to assume all kinds of theories about the Eucharist, trans-signification, trans-finalization uh, was the theological title of these theories. The content of these theories was simply a doubt about the reality of the mystery of Eucharist. John 15, 15, so those who know the Bible by heart may, may know what is my motto. Uh, it's when Jesus said uh, in the upper room, um, I do not call you any longer servants, slaves, servants, but I call you friends. So I took it in Latin, vos autem dixi amicos. You, 
I have called you friends. That's my motto.